Podcast, sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of The Bobby Bone Show. We're so honored to have on Senior Director of Editorial for the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum, Paul Kingsbury, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, Eric, it's great to be with you. You know, I, I got to brag on you. You know, I've owned some of the books that you've done in the past and everything. So next time you come in, you got to sign them, okay? I would love to. I'm honored that you have some of my books. Well, obviously, and, and we got to talk about the latest release that you have been a part of on helping bring this back to the public. And this is DeFord Bailey, a black star in early country music. And obviously, you and I know of DeFord and, and certainly his impact you know, on music and particularly on the Grand Ole Opry. And what you guys have done on this book with the Country Music Hall of Fame is updated it, right? expanded it. I mean, talk about how this process came about, Paul. Well, so years ago, uh, David Morton, the chief author of this, who mm -hmm. worked with Charles Wolfe, a professor at MTSU, um, David Morton found D. Ford Bailey and he, uh, he was somebody who had kind of been lost to history and living in Nashville. And um, David Morton was working for the Nashville Housing Authority at the, t at the time in the 70s yeah. and d kind of discovered that this talented black musician was living over in, ed in the Edge Hill community and um, at one time had been a Grand Ole Opry star. The first black mm -hmm. uh, Grand Ole Opry star, the first black star in country music. And so we definitely wanted to get this book out, which had been published in 1991, but it had been out of print for many years. Right. So yes, we went back in and we uh, did some updates, um, such as we got the uh, great old time black string, uh, string band musician, Dom Flemons, to, to write a forward. Right. Um, and he's a, a great admirer of D. Ford Bailey and plays harmonica in the D. Ford Bailey style. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also made sure there was a, a, a detailed session discography in this book, added photos that weren't in the original edition right. and um, just generally kind of spiffed it up and uh, we've got it back out on the market now. You know, and I got to tell you, Paul, some of the things I learned from this book, and just like I learned from your books as well, is, uh, you know, that he had not only playing on the Grand Ole Opry, you know, being a harmonica wizard as he was known, but touring with Roy Acuff and Bill Monroe. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, those guys, people like Roy Acuff, he actually says so in this book, Roy Acuff, Bill Monroe, the Delmore brothers, they said D. Ford back in the 1920s and 1930s, he was the big draw. He was the yeah. one that people wanted to see when they were touring out around the southeast, you know, wow. from one small theater to another or schoolhouse sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, D. Ford was a major star at the time. Of course, this was the era of radio. This right. is before television. Mm -hmm. We're talking about uh, he joined the Opry in 1926 and he was there till 1941. Um, but he was a major star. Oh, definitely. Well, and, and also, I wanted to bring up that it, it helped with the book and everything that D. Ford ended up in the Country Music Hall of Fame in 2005, right? Yeah, you know, um, I, I think that's one thing that people should know is that if David Morton, this young white man who was working for the Nashville Housing Authority, if he had not met D. Ford and if they had not become such good friends mm -hmm. that D. Ford said to David, you've got to write my life story. And David did so with right. the help of Charles Wolfe. If that book had not come out and if, if David hadn't worked so hard on it, I think in a lot of ways, D. Ford would have been lost to history and mm -hmm. he would never have been voted into the Country Music Hall of Fame right. as he rightly was in 2005 right. for being such a pioneer in music. Well, and I think for all of us as musicians and you're a fellow musician as well, to where learning the history about these great people such as D. Ford, I, it's so inspiring. And I think to all musicians, and certainly we were talking about harmonica players just like Charlie McCoy and everything, and, and showing you know, the impact that he had to, to audiences then as part of the Grand Ole Opry. It's just, it's so impressive. Well, and you know, he's a really interesting harmonica player and people can go on the web and you know, go look for YouTube videos and you can see you know, a couple of his signature pieces, harmonica pieces that people can still find out there. Um, Pan American Blues, right. where in a musical tune that he's created, he imitates the sound of a locomotive, of a train. Which is that, one of the things he was so well known for. Yeah, he was, he was great at taking natural sounds that he heard around them and, and putting them in his music. Mm -hmm. And he had another famous tune that you can find online called Fox Chase, where Hunter, he, he imitates 
in a, in a song, he imitates hunters and the baying hounds chasing a fox. Right. And you think, well, that's got to sound crazy. It sounds great. It does. It does. With, and, uh, and I wanted to bring up also, speaking of websites and where you can find materials, Paul, to where I think the Country Music Hall of Fame does an excellent job with their website. And there's, there's whole sections on there as well to where you can find more information on D Ford and, and find music and everything within that. I'm glad you brought that up, Eric. So we, uh, there, we have a couple of great resources if people want to learn more about D Ford Bailey. We've got, as we do for all of our Hall of Fame members, <clears throat> we've got a dedicated web page to D Ford Bailey um, that's got photos and videos. But uh, also, um, we have an award-winning um, educational web section right. called Discover D Ford Bailey, where people can also, read about D. Ford, see um, videos from the 1960s of mm -hmm. D. Ford playing harmonica. Also see um, uh, videos of programs that we've conducted in the museum from time to time with D. Ford Bailey's grandson, Carlos D. Ford Bailey, wow. playing harmonica in the style of D. Ford, and famous musicians like Ketch Secor of Old Crow Medicine Show. Mm -hmm. If anybody knows Wagon Wheel, that's where that, <laughs> that's where that song came from. Exactly. Um, um, him playing in the style of D. Ford Bailey. And we have, if people are interested in harmonica, we've got harmonica lessons on that site. So Discover D. Ford Bailey is a pretty cool part of the website. You know, I've got to bring up another great thing. You know, to me, the Country Music Hall of Fame Museum is such an incredible institution that we have here in Nashville, but it's also not just a museum. It's not just an archive. It, it stays connected to the community it serves by having these uh, sessions to where people can come in and learn from guitarists, harmonica players, bass players, percussionists. And I think that is such a great way to give back to where it's like you can come in and, and take this in, you know, from these musicians and learn not only where they, their influences, but how to play the instruments. Yeah, on, on a regular basis, people can go to our website and see this. They can come to songwriter sessions where they can hear from the songwriters, talk about their songwriting career and playing some of their songs, or, or some of the, uh, as you say, some of the famous musicians around Nashville right. will do these sessions too, where they'll discuss you know, the songs that they've worked on and then actually show you, and it's pretty cool. I just think it's so impressive, and I, I've got to bring up also uh, the bookstore, and I know that this book, you know, D. Ford Bailey, will be available everywhere. I still like to go local, you know, and also you've got the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum website, but you guys have a great store there. Well, thank you. Yeah, we, we uh, actually try to stock um, a lot of different kinds of music books that mm -hmm. we think people might be interested in as well as recorded music, LPs right. and such. Um, so yeah, you can definitely get this book, um, the D. Ford Bailey book at our museum store. You can get it online through our store. And uh, as you, I think you alluded to, Eric, you know, this book as of June 13th will be distributed nationally right. across the U.S. So in bricks and mortar stores, Amazon, BarnesandNoble.com, all of that, it's available. Well, and I don't mean to put you on the spot on this, Paul, but going through the book and uh, once again, you know, Dom Fleming's doing such a, a great job, you know, opening it up and doing the forward. It seems like it almost lends itself to like an incredible documentary or something. Are well, there any conversations on that? I will say, you know, I don't know if, if you've ever encountered this. There is a nice short documentary that um, uh, WMPT did, mm -hmm. you know, the Nashville's uh, public television station did right. several years ago. I don't know, 15 years ago. It's pretty good. I, I do think there's so much to be said about D. Mm -hmm. Ford. I think when people read this story, which is really rich Very. with, you know, all kinds of great little anecdotes about what D. Ford Bailey's life was like as a musician and past his time on the Opry. Yeah, I think there could be a longer documentary. I think that would, you know, and also you'd be a great resource on that. Well, and, and <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I'd be happy to, but I will also say that our author, uh, David Morton, who, mm -hmm. who got to know uh, D. Ford so well, yeah. he's a fantastic resource. He's still living. Um, he's in... Um, Reno, Nevada now, but he's coming back to Nashville uh, July 28 um, to do a, an interview program in our museum and wow. sign some books yeah. in the bookstore. So uh, yeah, if anybody has a chance to come out, you get to hear from the guy who knew D. Ford Bailey personally. You know, you have such a fun job, Paul. You oh, know, I love it. And, and especially getting to work with the Country Music Hall of Fame there to where, you know, every time I go, I find something new. 
besides the exhibits changing and updating and everything, it's just uh, it's such a great part of the history and it's constantly growing and doing new things, just like the new books and bringing attention. I got to bring up also to where there is now a street named after D. Ford Bailey. Yeah, I was just I was just there <clears throat> a few days ago uh, for the dedication of uh, D. Ford Bailey Avenue over in the Edge Hill community. Right. Um, run, runs right by the uh, library, the Edge Hill Library there in the park there. And uh, I'll tell you, it was a wonderful um, event. You know, the family, the extended uh, Bailey family right. came out and was there for it. And they had a chance to talk about it and how much it meant to them. Mm -hmm. um, David Morton came in from uh, Reno, Nevada, and wow. he talked about uh, his time with D. Ford. And I, I spoke a little bit. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's taken a long time. And mm -hmm. sadly, D. Ford passed away in 1982. Right. Um, so he didn't live to see this, but I think now the world is really finding out what a pioneer D. Ford Bailey was. Definitely. I think this book helps, and, and with the updates of the photos and the discography, everything that, that you and your team have done together to bring this up to date just makes it more powerful. And I think that he is certainly worthy of this recognition now and that people are going to want to know more yeah. and dig deeper. I'll, I'll say this, you know, anybody coming to the museum, let's say you come to the museum store to buy a book, but you decide you want to go through the museum, right early on when you start your walk through the museum, and we have this walk through history, uh, country music history that we call Sing Me Back Home. Right. Um, early on, when we're talking about the pioneers of country music, Right there, you'll see one of D. Ford Bailey's harmonicas with this special homemade megaphone that he made yes. to blast his sound out louder. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, you're right there almost able to touch history. It's, it's right so there. It's so powerful. Yeah. And my only suggestion would be, I think we need one or two more guitars on display in the Country Music Hall of Fame, you know, just, and you and I could go and just check on them. Well, we could. You know, I, we, have, we have more than 500 guitars in the Country Music Hall of Fame collection, but we don't have enough space to right. put them all on display. I mean, we have more than 40 of Chet Atkins guitars oh, in the museum. Such a so we, we have many key instruments mm -hmm. on display, including, I realize this is off the guitar subject, but we recently had um, Earl Scruggs, famous uh, Gibson banjo donated to that. the Country Music Hall of Fame, and people can see that on display. Just amazing. So much history and, and bringing it back to the music and I think also besides enjoying, you know, the books and everything else coming to the Country Music Hall of Fame, you know, um, just it, it's just it amazing. It's powerful to me every time I go. Yeah, well, I, I, I would say that um, what we're trying to do is, is to bring people up close mm -hmm. to uh, history. We have tremendous resources because the museum has existed since 1967. Right. Now, this is its second location. It used to be on Music Row, and in 2001 we moved downtown to this beautiful, large building, right. um, state of the art. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we do have a lot of resources at this point, and the music community around Nashville and around country music has been so generous in supporting us and when they feel like they have treasured items that they don't need to have anymore right. like D. Ford Bailey's harmonica which was donated or Earl Scruggs banjo they come to the museum and then mm -hmm. everybody can see them and also uh, you know great shows there as well besides having Hatch show which is you know Hatch Prince one of your books uh, you know there's also uh, the concerts that go on down there we do. We have uh, wonderful concerts that happen in our CMA theater. I just a few weeks ago saw the, uh, the Roots Rock band uh, Los Lobos play oh, there. I love them. Amazing, mm -hmm. amazing show. And um, we, people should go online to our website and check it out because we have so many great shows there. And Definitely. it's a fairly intimate environment. It is intimate. The last time I was there, I saw the Oak Ridge Boys, and uh, it was just, it, was, it felt intimate. It's not, you know, nothing against, you know, larger venues. But to me, it's feel, you feel like you're up close and personal with the artist there, and the sound quality is amazing. Yeah, it is. It's really, it's really good. It's about an 800-seat theater, and it's a great place to, uh, to see the acts you like really up close. Definitely. Well, I'm sure everybody's going to want to buy their own copy. D. Ford Bailey, the book is out. It's been updated. Um, I recommend you uh, go to the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum and uh, buy your copy there, or you can go online and a lot of other great things. Also, 
I understand there's rumors of more incredible books coming out within the next year or so. Some of them we can't speak of yet. Yeah, but we've got we've we've got uh, several more books in the works for the fall mm -hmm. and for 2024, and I can't announce them at this time. But um, we're proud of them as we're proud of having this D. Ford Bailey book back out for people. It's incredible work, and I think uh, what a great way to acknowledge his contributions to music and uh, to the Grand Ole Opry and just being part of the Country Music Hall of Fame of the museum. Yeah. It's good stuff. Paul, thanks so, so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it, Eric. Be sure and get your own copy of D. Ford Bailey, the book. You're going to enjoy it as much as I have. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of the Bobby Bones Show.